Okay, before we get into the build, I just wanted to show you the different components I'll be using for this particular version of the Heli Udvar. I did buy two knife blanks. I do plan on building a second one, um, but that'll be on down the road after I make a few other knives. So uh, I wanted to kind of show you something here at Verse, and I'm, I'm, this is a version I did some preliminary work on to just try some things out. But I'm going to show you the other version now because this one hasn't been uh, marked up yet. This is what the knife blank looks like. And in my opinion, it's particularly striking a design from Hele. It reminds me a lot of the Tamagami or some of the other knife uh, designs that they have, just kind of a classic, beautiful, a scanty edge knife. But the full tang is, is why I really came after this one. If you've watched my other videos, I'm a big fan of Hele. Uh, sometime the Scandi Edge, um, a little bit soft. It can take some some rolling and things like that under heavy use. But this is a very stout feeling knife, and I'm excited to see how it will perform outdoors. But one of the things I notice about this knife blank, and again, I ordered two of them. They both came this way, um, is the particularly, I'm going to see if this will focus here. Okay. There we go. Um, the spine. So the spine is polished as you would expect for a full tang knife because obviously this is going to be exposed all the way around. When you get right to where the palm area starts, you've got this rough, black, kind of oxidized, completely unfinished steel. And I don't know if this came just out of the heat treat and, and they polished it all and for some reason specifically chose not to polish this area here, maybe because they figured... Whoever builds a knife is going to be sanding stuff here anyway. I just thought that that was odd. It's on the inside as well. It's the same type of exposed metal that you would get inside of these pin openings and, and these skeletonized areas here. And then the back where the knife breaker or whatever the pointed section is for, I mean the, wind, the glass breaker, um, it's polished as well. And I just thought that was interesting. Um, and it took quite a bit of grinding, but I, I did get it off. It, nothing super serious, but um, I did use an electric grinder and it took a little bit of time. So not something I wanted to want to do completely after the fact. So as you can see, it's not really refined, but when I get to the sanders and stuff in the later stages, I'll buff that out. But I've done that on the outside and the inside and to try to get it kind of up to a good starting point and up to this uh, particular juncture the only thing I've done is kind of tape the blade off to try to protect the steel and then I've gone ahead and bored out the two uh, pinholes here to a standard size and I used a double burr bit that I got online I have a whole set this is an 8 mil I wrote it on there so I could refer to it and I basically just used um, drill oil and tap this out to a standard eight mil bit, and I'll be using a uh, stainless steel pin, uh, no design or anything for this one. And so the last portion of this that's already been kind of uh, pre-modded here is this glass breaker point or whatever this design is. Not a huge fan of the look. Um, I don't envision myself needing this particular feature. Um, I do like a more classic kind of almost Enzo kind of feeling on the back, just a curved handle. So I've gone ahead and made a template out of a spare piece of wood that I'll be using uh, to make all of the scale tracing for these knives moving forward. And basically to do that, if you're interested, um, I photographed this knife top down, uh, made sure I was as flat as I could be, imported it into um, Adobe Illustrator. You could also do it with Photoshop or um, some other software, I'm sure. And then uh, kind of played with the the shape and the and drew some kind of contours and stuff the way I thought it would look good in my opinion and then printed that out on paper and then traced that onto a piece of wood and made this scale outline here and so this will give you an idea of what I'm going for when you line the pins up it'll just be a gradual swoop here in the front and in the back will be contoured out and then I've marked the difference off with a sharpie here on the back end of that black area, and I will be grinding um, that off as I progress through the build. So that's the kind of foundation of what I'm starting with and the direction I'm heading. Um, it's going to be a very basic build. I'm going to be using uh, white uh, G10 liners for this one. I just 
I'm a huge fan of liners. I particularly like white. I just think, think it gives the knife a really good pop. Uh, as mentioned, I'll be using an 8 mil stainless steel pen. And then for the scales, <clears throat> these are stabilized, dyed, spalted maple burl um, scales. And, and a lot of times I work with blocks. I try to get maybe two knives out of them if I can. But um, I really like the way that these looked. And um, when they get finished, I think it's going to be a really beautiful, natural, kind of classic feel that will pair, pair really well with the Hella. So right now, I'm going to get on to tracing out the handles on where I think the uh, kind of the grain and stuff will look good and get on with the build. Okay, so didn't get very far into this project and it's time to make a change. The original scales um, that I had, you can see the first one snapped when I was sanding it. Uh, so when you're working with burls and some of these stabilized woods, even though the resin's really tough, you'll get these pits and pores. And when they link up over time, they just create weak links and this one, like I said, snapped when I was when I was sanding it flat. So I may glue this back together. I don't know, try to use it for another project, but not an outdoor knife. And as I said, I was going to make two of the Utvars and the second one I was going to do in the green. And so this is that block right here. And I've just gone ahead and moved it to the primary one now. And the outside of this was just this kind of marbled green here. I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but really kind of a pretty color. And when I cut it down the middle, it revealed more of this yellow and gold. So interesting opportunities here. I'm gonna do some tracing with uh, the scale blank that I made and see kind of what it may look like and figure out which way I wanna go with it.
All right, guys, here is the final product. And man, did I run into some issues with this build. Several that I've not normally run into before, certainly on a single uh, knife build. But uh, in the beginning, the, the wood block that I picked had some serious imperfections. Block wind up uh, splitting after I'd already cut it and started sanding it. So I moved on to another block. This one had uh, deep pitting and recesses as well. The block didn't split, but I did have to uh, sand it much thinner than I normally would make my uh, knife scales. I normally like them a little bit thicker, especially on a larger knife like this. I also like kind of the Coke bottle uh, kind of contouring through the middle. This ended up being kind of like what you might get from uh, Breeza in an Enzo Trapper uh, build. The stock scales are, are, are fairly thin, so it came out similar to that. Um, in addition, had some scratching of the steel lamination up here on the blade. See if I can get that to show up here. Um, in the light, you can see it. And that happened. I had some uh, metal sawdust on the table. There's a lot of them right there. From when I was sanding the inside of, uh, of the knife out uh, to get rid of that black stuff I talked to you about. Um, anyway, got rid of that. And I think I laid the blade down in a little bit of that metal uh, debris and it scratched it. And I did not realize that at the time. But this is my first Heliudvar build. I do have another... Uh, one that I haven't started working on yet that I may do on down the road. But for our starter and something that I want to try, you know, kind of out at camp, uh, this will be a good way to go. I'll get a good feel for uh, balance, heft, how the uh, edge holds up under, um, you know, kind of traditional camp use, how I've been doing in some of my other videos. And uh, if I get out um, anytime soon, I'll try to film that and bring that back to you guys, tell you my thoughts. But overall, really pleased. This was a fun build, uh, kind of a different um, handle and blade design that I've been doing. A lot of, uh, obviously, Enzo knives uh, from Breeza, the last several videos that I've done, and even ones that I've not filmed. Uh, I've had requests from friends to have those particular knives done for themselves or as gifts, so I've built several of them. Uh, but this one, this one was fun. I'm glad to see Hella put something out with a little bit more beefiness to it. Uh, again, the first full tang offering from the manufacturer. Uh, hopefully the steel holds up, uh, like I mentioned before. Handle design, kind of on par with like a, maybe like a Benchmade Bushcrafter, obviously not in thickness, but in how the back end is slimmer and how it's got this kind of uh, deep groove here. Thinner at the back than I'm used to, but um, a nice looking knife, uh, a, a good weight to it. And I think all things considered, this came out really well. So, well, that'll be it for this video. Um, I hope, as usual, you learned something new or you're inspired to do some sort of woodworking of your own. And if nothing else, maybe just a cure for some boredom, guys. But as always, uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until that time, be safe and God bless.